Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be talking about vitamin D and Hashimoto's. What do we know as of 2024? I get asked all the time about vitamin D and so I figure there's like three people that are probably going to watch this video. Number one, uh, you have Hashimoto's but you still feel bad. Uh, number two, you have Hashimoto's and you know your vitamin D is low. And number three, you have Hashimoto's, you feel bad, you've taken vitamin D but you don't feel that much better. So let's talk about all three of those scenarios and what we know about vitamin D and Hashimoto's in 2024. All right, so vitamin D and Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's, of course, is an autoimmune thyroid condition. It's the most common organ-specific autoimmune condition. It's the most common cause of hypothyroidism. I've got other videos that kind of explain the physiology, but the thing to know and the thing to understand about vitamin D and Hashimoto's is that Hashimoto's is an autoimmune condition. Now, what do we know about vitamin D and Hashimoto's just from what the research has shown pretty clearly? Number one, we know that vitamin D regulates, modulates, which is a good thing, your immune system and generally promotes immune system tolerance. Now tolerance is a good thing because in an autoimmune condition like Hashimoto's, your immune system has lost its ability to tolerate you. That's another way of thinking about autoimmune. It's when your immune system attacks you. It can no longer tolerate your tissues and vitamin D works against that. Vitamin D promotes tolerance. So generally speaking, vitamin D is immune system modulatory, immune system regulatory, and is generally a really good thing for autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's. The number two thing we know from the research is that vitamin D levels are lower in Hashimoto's patients compared to people who don't have Hashimoto's. I can attest to this fact. Uh, I was going to say this later, but I'll say it now. I mean, roughly 99% of the people I see with Hashimoto's have vitamin D levels that aren't good. So I can, I can prove that as well. Now, what does uh, lower mean? Well, it can mean that they're deficient, like below 30 or 25. It could mean that they're like 35. But we already know, it's been found out, vitamin D is lower in Hashimoto's patient. And it's a big deal. Why? Because vitamin D promotes immune system regulation. And if Hashimoto's patients have lower vitamin D, their immune systems are going to be more out of whack, you know, more asymmetrical, uh, more inflamed. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> a lot of well-meaning endocrinologists and primary care doctors uh, they kind of don't know this about vitamin D, uh, or if they do know, they think it's not that big a deal. But I'm here to tell you, it's a huge deal. It is definitely something that needs to be addressed. All right, so we know that what vitamin D does. We know that vitamin D levels are lower in Hashimoto's patients. Number three, what we know from the research is that supplementing vitamin D in patients that have Hashimoto's and vitamin D deficiency particularly uh, lowers thyroid antibody levels. Okay, a couple things to unpack there. So. Uh, supplementing vitamin D. Well, there's, you don't just take a, whatever dose you want, right? You base your dose based on what your baseline level is. And we're not going to talk about that just now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, antibody levels can get lower and we like that, but lowering antibody levels doesn't always mean you feel better, okay? So antibody levels fluctuate over time. And yes, we want them to be low as possible because they if they're high, they can create a cross-reaction problem. Basically, your autoimmune problem can expand into other tissues. But we know that supplementing does lower uh, antibody levels in people that were vitamin D deficient and have Hashimoto's, which is uh, a good evidence that it's going to do something uh, positive for your immune system. Now, my experience. So my experience over the last 20 plus years, as I mentioned a second ago, almost 100% of Hashimoto's patients that I see that make it to me have vitamin D levels that are not good. Now notice, I didn't say are deficient, because when you say deficient, that's kind of determined by the lab that you're using. So vitamin D below 25 nanograms per milliliter can be deficient or it can be 20, kind of depends on the lab. But even 30 isn't good for vitamin D. 35 isn't good. Why? Because we want your immune system to be regulated. So me, what I shoot for in almost all my patients is at least like in the 60s or 70s. And that's not a high level. That's not a toxic level. That's an easily achievable level if you uh, supplement it the right way. Now, I'm making it sound like vitamin D is really, really good. Uh, but here's the thing. I don't use vitamin D as the only intervention when we're trying to help someone with Hashimoto's. And that leads into my the part of the video you're probably not going to like where I caution you against treating yourself. You should not treat yourself for two main reasons. Number one, you don't know your baseline level, so you don't know how much to take or when to retest, okay? Number two, vitamin D by itself as the only thing you do is probably not going to move the needle and turn your whole world around 
and make you feel 100% better, right? Because if you're watching this video, there's a really good chance you don't feel good, right? You've been taking the medication, your TSH maybe looks normal, but you still feel bad. You still might have brain fog, depression, GI problems, uh, fatigue. So if you're watching this, vitamin D is probably not going to be the thing that turns this around. And that brings me to a bigger point is because working with the Hashimoto's patients and really doing a good job means looking at more than just vitamin D, right? Unfortunately, I can tell you from experience, there's people that say that they do functional medicine, they could be MDs or otherwise, and you find out all they really do is give people vitamin D. Well, that's not really functional. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit better than the standard stuff, but it's not that great. What you really have to look at is things like what problems might you have with foods? What are your barrier systems like? Do you have any kind of infections you don't know about? Do you have other autoimmune problems that we could test for? What is your immunophenotype? Like what is your immune system fingerprint? So I'm making vitamin D sound great and it is, but it isn't the only thing that a person ought to be using. And you need to work with someone that knows that vitamin D isn't the only thing. Vitamin D is part of an overall treatment plan because everybody is different. I mean, if you give me a hundred people that have a diagnosis of Hashimoto's, sure, there are going to be some commonalities, but each one of those people is going to have their own flavor of Hashimoto's. They're going to have their own immune system fingerprint, which is why I think it's critical to make sure you're working with someone that understands those principles. So they ought to know what tests to order, how to interpret them. They don't put you through some sort of you know cookie cutter uh, program. Uh, and yes, vitamin D might be part of the program, but it's more complicated than that, right? So that is what we know in 2024 about vitamin D. I'll review. We know that vitamin D regulates the immune system. That's a good thing. We know that vitamin D is lower in Hashimoto's patients. That's a bad thing. We know that supplementing vitamin D in Hashimoto's patients with vitamin D deficiency usually lowers their antibody levels. That's a good thing, but doesn't always correlate with how you feel. And you shouldn't be treating yourself. <laughs> That's not what the research says. That's my clinical experience from the last 20 years says. Don't try to treat yourself. It's way more complicated than you're ready for. You need to work with someone that understands the complexity uh, and that has experience dealing with a lot of different Hashimoto's patients. And uh, I hope you found this helpful. I hope it answered some questions for you. You may have wanted me to say, oh, well, how much vitamin D should I take? Well, I'm not going to do that because I really think you got to be working someone with someone that can help you with that. So don't hate me. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.